All right, three four defense system, Coach Brady. We're gonna talk about game planning uh, for our defense, kind of how we run through it after a game on Saturday and Sunday. Um, you know, the most important thing is gonna be our breakdowns. You know, we we gotta do a great job uh, filling in the information. Um, you know, all, all the stuff. We're gonna fill in all of the of the files we are gonna need during the week within the huddle. I like to be generic with stuff. So, for example, with the play call, we're not gonna put power right. Um, we're not going to put in the, all the exact routes because we want to be able to do quick summations when we're doing through our Excel sheet. I like to use Excel for ours um, so that we can kind of sort how we want to sort it, but it's easier if you use more generic words. And there's other spots where we can put, you know, direction of the run to the strength, to the tight end, away from the tight end. Um, you know, well, we got to tag everything we want for our breakdowns. So for us, that means we're going to tag who the team is in every, every clip. Uh, make sure that's part of the breakdown, the quarter, down, distance, yard line, hash. We want to know any kind of shift or motion, backfield set, the, what the play is, direction of the play. Is the play to the tight end or away from the tight end? Is the play to the strength or away from the strength? So if we have all these things marked, it allows us to go through and look at different plays and say, okay, they ran power 15 times and they ran power to the tight end 14 times. Okay, Those are great indications for us of what's going on. You also always want to label every play who is getting targeted with the ball. So if we don't catch the ball, if they throw the ball to number six, we're going to put number six, even though he didn't catch the ball. We want to know where the ball is going, who they're trying to get the ball to the most. We got to know who these targets are, who their top players are going forward. All right? So we do that as a group. It's very important that we all get together okay, and have a staff approach to inputting all this information. We have one guy that does down distance yard line and hash as soon as the game's over. Right? We have another guy that does uh, the plays and the formations. And then, you know, it's also important before you even get to this point that you're all on the same page and understand how we call things. Our, what we try to do here is we try to call stuff the same on offense and defense. So we try to use our offense's lingo. You've probably all been a part of a program where the offense has one set of formations and calls them, and the defense calls them something else. All right? That's hard for the players. It's hard for the coaches. All right? That's, that's just too much work. That's work ball. We want to make it simple for everybody. So the offense, if they, if they call two by two doubles, we're going to call it doubles on defense just to keep it similar. And we do have some guys that play both sides of the ball. So it makes it easier for them as well and also helps us um, when we're talking about game plans for the players, uh, stuff during the game. Anytime we're talking to our kids about football, at least we're all on the same page using the same lingo. I think that's really, really important. Okay, so once we have everything inputted um, for our breakdowns, the next step is going to be our analysis. Okay, so one of the things we're definitely gonna we'll take a look at are field areas. Okay, these are some of the the, the, the I'm sorry, these are some of the breakdowns we like to use. Okay, Did down in distance, first play of the series and field areas. So what that means is what are they doing on certain downs? Okay, what do they do in the first play of every series? There's some teams you play their 90% run the first play of the series. Okay, I think that's important to know. If we get a three-game breakdown of somebody, you know, and and or you know they're throwing the football. Uh, on, on first play of the series. Uh, these are important things to know we want to have as part of our, we do our call sheet and do our, our breakdown for the players, this stuff we're going to give our players, stuff that stands out. The field area is going to be what are they doing on certain areas of the field? What are they doing coming out? What are they doing in the, the green zone? What are they going to do when they get in the red zone? What are they doing in the goal line? Uh, those field areas really matter to us as, a, as we call our plays and stuff that is pretty evident that they like to do that's going to be on our call sheet. It's going to be something we give to our kids, something we know about going to the game. All right. Uh, formation and personnel groups, obviously that's important because we want to be able to predict what they're going to do. So if we know in certain personnel group they're at 90% run, that's pretty important for us. Okay. Uh, to make sure we disseminate information to our players, but also have that part of our call sheet. And if we play a team that is big on personnel groups, obviously our calls are going to re uh, replicate that. We're going to have calls that are going to co coincide with what, the, what their uh, personnel is. Um, based in that game. The backfield set, some, some teams is a big deal, some teams it's not. We're going to do it every week to make sure, but that can help us out if there's certain tells or they do certain things in certain backfield sets, if their eye backs, you know, is a certain runner pass percentage or certain plays. That's stuff we want to know, um, you know, to help us out. Motion shift and trick play report. We're also going to do their best play, so big run and big passes. We're going to have those cataloged so we can watch them during the week and kind of see what they did in those plays and if there's certain plays that keep popping up over and over uh, that we need to make sure we're ready to stop. Also, we're going to look at the run game versus five and six-man blitzes, okay? 
also their pass game as well. We're going to take a look at both of those and see who had success against these guys and what kind of blitzes were they running when they had success and what caused them some trouble, um, you know, especially with our Oki front. And the last thing is the target, right? We want to know who they're targeting with the run and the pass, who's getting the football in their hands, um, you know, the most. All right. So staff meeting. All right, once we have everything done, now we can have our staff meeting, get everybody together, we can talk about this stuff. Um, one of the first things we'll always do is make a formation hit chart. So we'll have all the formations, we'll put the plays they run in each formation, where they're running the football to, which side, where it's going, uh, and, and kind of get an idea where they're hitting at uh, with, with their offense, what they like to do. We're going to make sure everybody gets our information um, going through it. And then we're going to jump into our seven points of game planning. So once we have all this information broken down and put in the, in the charts and we have our hit chart done, now we can actually have a real conversation about the team we're playing because we have real numbers, not just guessing. I think it's important. You've got to watch their games three or four times um, as a coach yourself. You've got to break it down. Uh, I know it helps me to actually break down the film myself and watch it. I, re I retain more of what they're doing, have a better idea uh, going into the week. So let's talk about game planning. All right, so there's seven main categories I'm going to talk about with game planning for us. Once we have all the other information set, we're going to talk about the quarterback, what, what, his, uh, what his threats are, especially if he's a runner. We're going to talk about what do they do best and who's their best player. We're going to talk about they have a screen team and RPO team. Some teams are really good at screen. If they are, we've got to practice that a lot uh, during the week. Uh, we've got to know if they're 10 or 11 personnel has to do with the tight end. Having a tight end in the game changes everything. If you have an H back moving around, that's going to cause us to have, we have to be aware of that guy and where he is and some of the calls we make. What are they doing on big plays? Third down, fourth down, what are they doing in the red zone? The plays that change games, you know, we got to know what, what are they doing in those situations? Where's the ball going? Um, you know, and a big part too for our D line, really our D line coach every week is going to be what are their protections? And then for our DB coach, what are their routes? Right? We want to do a, a breakdown of those and have, have some information for our kids to, to share with them on how they're protecting their pass, the routes they're running, and the last thing, how they're going to formation us. Are they doing anything kind of crazy? Are they, what are they, how do they attack an, uh, sorry, a defense uh, on, on Friday night? So we want to have a plan for that as well and see what they're doing. So let's run through all these uh, here real quick. All right, so run threat. The big question there is, is the quarterback – are they, do they have design runs for the quarterback? Are they running quarterback power? Are they running quarterback ISO? Are they running option? You know, what kind of runs is he, is he doing? Sometimes the quarterback doesn't run at all. But again, this is going to affect our calls and some things we may want to run that week to, to, you know, take him away and make his job harder in that game. All right? Um, how much of the run game is the quarterback? What percentage of it? Sometimes it's very low. Sometimes you play you know, a team where the quarterback is the guy. He's going to carry the ball 70% of the time. So that's important for us as we game plan as well because if the quarterback is carrying the football, we need to figure out how to get extra hitters okay, into the box. How much does he scramble? You know, is he throwing the football on time? You know, we, often you'll see a quarterback, he'll, go, he'll get the snap, one, two, three, and then he doesn't throw the ball on time. He's always running. Or, you know, is he looking to run? Right? Some quarterbacks would like to run the football. They don't want to throw it. Um, we got to know what we have. Is he going to scramble and still throw it? Because you have those quarterbacks, too, that always want to throw the football. They don't want to run. So as we study the film, we're trying to figure out who is this guy we're playing against. Because as you know, the quarterback is where it all runs through, right? That's the most important guy uh, on the field, you know. Can he beat us with his legs? He might run a lot, but how good is he? Is he that good of a player? Um, and how do we disrupt him? How do we get him off platform on his throws if they're a drop-back team? If they're a big sprint out and boot team, how do we keep that guy in the pocket? You know, if, if he's a guy we're really worried about scrambling, do we talk about having a little bit different rush on him? Keep him in the pocket and let him throw the football. You know, sometimes we want the quarterback to throw the football uh, against us. Um, you're also going to take a look at his inf inflections. You know, as, as he gives the cadence, is he drawing people off sides? What are the down and distance when he does that? So we can coach our players up, you know, and so they can kind of study that. It's going to get an idea of when he's doing that. Uh, very important uh, for our guys. The more information we can give them, the better. And the last thing is Wildcat. Do they have anybody in their offense that comes in that plays quarterback other than the guy that we know is a starter? So, again, important information for us to know as we talk about our game plan. All right, so the second one was what do they do best? 
All right. What play we need to take away? I always talk about making them play left-handed, you know, if they're a right-handed quarterback. So let's take away their best play, their best player. Uh, and how are we going to do that? Somehow we need to slow that guy down. I mean, obviously there's some great players in high school football. Uh, we can't totally stop them. But how do we slow them down or at least force them, if, if their tailback's their best player and they like run and toss and power, how, how do we take those two plays away from them and force them to do something else they're not used to doing? Or force him to make another cut he hasn't been making recently. All right? Um, so we're going to change up how we may fit some stuff. Spill it. Hard join it. You know, switch it up for him. Don't, don't let it be consistent and easy for him the whole game. Force him to make some decisions and change what he's doing. Uh, and that also gets back to, you know, what have been their best plays? What are their big plays on film? How are we going to prepare for them? And what's the best scenario when they run those plays for us, to, our kids, to have success? All right, back to the screens. You know, screen teams can be really tough. The teams that are good at it, they practice it, and they, they run them at the right times. So we got to make sure we, we practice fitting those screens up. Whatever our blitzes are for that week, we're going to make sure we practice our blitzes, but fit them up to the screens. Because some of your blitzes, the guys change who may have the force or contain or who the hitter is on the screen. We also want to continue to talk to our guys about how to retrace. Because our D-line hears it all the time, but our other blitzers don't. They need to know that. You know, a lot of teams, what are they running these screens? Okay. If they had 15 first downs last game and six of them were in screens, that's pretty important that we know we practice screens. That's one out of three first downs. So that's an important stat for us as we go through the breakdown as well and look at our, our call sheet. Um, you know, when do they run them? What part of the game? Is it a third down thing? Do they run them on first down? Is it second and medium? You know, it's kind of, you know, get a feel for that. A lot of times teams are pretty consistent. Um, when they run their screens, as far as that goes. Now, the RPO game, you know, everybody's trying to do some RPO stuff now. The first thing we're trying to figure out, are they RPOing or not? Is it a called play action pass where the quarterback is just faking it and throwing it and it's already called? Or is the quarterback actually reading the play? Um, we're trying to figure that out on film. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. But the most important thing is, they, who are they attacking? So if they are running RPO, what backer, what conflict defender? Who is the person they're trying to read? How can we mess with that read with the quarterback and kind of take that away from them? If they're going to be big in the RPOs, sometimes you can get people frustrated by moving that guy around, moving him late, and shifting him to put some pressure on that quarterback and his decision making. Um, and then lastly, you know, with RPOs and screens, are there certain formations or personnel groups they're doing them out of? You'll play some teams that run all their screens out of 10 personnel. But when they're in 11 or 20, they don't run screens, right? So uh, I think that's another important fact to take a look at and see if you can find some of those kind of indications. And that also goes into our call sheet as we plan for the week and the game plan. As you see teams evolve offensively and become such spread offenses, you, you start to see the tight end went away. Now he's starting to come back a little bit, or at least as an H-back. But for us, we got to know if they're a tight end team or not or H-back, because it's going to affect so much we do on defense. It affects our fits. It affects how we line up. As soon as you put a tight end in the game or an H-back, we got to talk about now we're going to be in a six, we're going to be in a nine, we're going to be in an inside shade on that tight end. What gaps do we have? It changes everything as soon as you go from a three-man surface, I'm sorry, from a two-man surface to a three-man surface. So we're going to take a look at that as well. Uh, and it also affects our, affects our blitz tracks. I'm a C-gap blitzer. If there's no tight end, I'm running through the tackle's feet. Now you put a tight end there, now I've got to cross that tight end's face. Right? I may not have had a tight end in the last three weeks in front of me. Okay? And if your offense is a spread offense and don't have a tight end, that also creates some problems. So you have to try to figure out on your own because you're not seeing that in practice every day from, from your offense. Okay? Um, you know, how good a blocker is the tight end or H-back? If he's a really good blocker, you've got to have to prepare, prepare for him to, be, you know, to stop the run because he's going to do a great job. That adds a sixth guy that can catch a football and can block. Um, it's a valuable thing to have a guy like that. And all the years, whenever we had a good tight end, he played a lot of football and he was in there all the time because that's something you just don't see as much nowadays. So we want to be aware of that. If there's a tight end, how good is he? What does he do well? You know, another thing for the tight end is how good a catcher, I mean, how good a receiver is he? What, what's his speed? Do we have to treat him like a receiver even when he's a tight end? So that can affect you in the three by one stuff when you get Trey. You know, how, how are we going to play Trey um, depending on who that guy is playing tight end and what kind of athlete he is? All right, so that's tight end stuff that I think is important for our breakdown. All right, a couple more. 
All right, money downs in red zone. Okay, obviously we spend time every week on third and fourth down, you know, preparing for that. We're gonna have a few calls we wanna run. So, I mean, this part of our staffing will be very important because whatever we decide we're gonna do on third and fourth down, we're gonna practice it a lot. It's gonna come down, it's gonna help us in the game on Friday night to win or lose that game. So, um, you know, first, is it based on personnel, what they do? It, sometimes it is. You know, it, you can see different guys out there. Um, if they're in 21 personnel, that's going to affect and change what they do compared to 11 or 10 personnel. So we, get, we want to know that. What are they doing in personnel groups as far as that goes? Also, we do a um, targeting for third and fourth down, right? You may see their, their best receiver is number six, but on third down, they're throwing the ball to number nine because he's six foot five, right? And he's getting a lot of touches, a lot of targets on big downs. So we want to be aware of that. You know, which guys scare us? What players scare us on the other team? What guys we know that are really good football players that if I was them on third and fourth down, running the ball behind that guy or that group, or I'm trying to get the ball in this guy's hands uh, as far as that goes. Um, for the red zone, do they run pick routes? Are they going to try and pick us? Uh, most teams do if you're going to play a bunch of man. What are they doing down there in the red zone? How are they attacking us? Do they actually bring a goal line offense on? They bring in extra tackles, bigger, bigger linemen. Uh, they bring in fullbacks and tight ends, take receivers out. You know, what are they doing down there in the goal line so we have an idea? Because if they have a goal line team, we have to have a goal line team. Now, I, mean, I don't know the last season if we ever even used our goal line defense, to be honest, because no one else ran a goal line offense. But every week we've got to check and see if they're doing that and be ready for that every weekend. So, all right. For, oh, we like to blitz, right? We like to move around, like to have fun. But part of that too is we got to do our homework. We got to have a plan on how we're going to attack their offense. Okay, well, that starts with what is their pass pro, right? What do they do up front? How do they protect their quarterback? Can we get there with our four guys? Can we rush four? Can we rush tackle and nose and the jack, or tackle and nose and the Sam, or one of the backers? Can we get there with four guys? Uh, some weeks we can, we feel like, some weeks we feel like we can't. So we got to make sure what that is and what that looks like um, and how, and what, how we're going to attack their protection, how we're going to maybe get a mismatch, and how we get a backer or our best rusher on their running back. That's really what we're trying to accomplish if we can do that. That'll be good for us, okay? Uh, we talk about their routes. We're going to talk about what are their top routes. What are they running the most? You know, they run a lot of mesh. They run a lot of smash. There's a lot of quick game. Uh, you know, is it curl slide? Well, what kind of stuff are they doing um, with their routes so we can practice those the most? And then deep balls. How many shots are they going to take a game? If they got great receivers and a quarterback with a great arm, they're probably going to take some shots. We got to be ready for that. We got to practice deep balls. We got to play the ball in the air. All right. Also, as part of their pass game, are they getting on the edge? Are they sprinting and booting? Are they going to use play action? If they're a great run team, they're going to have a great play action game. So we got to make sure we're prepared for that and have a plan in place and, and definitely have our guys read their keys and, and, and see the film. Um, field breakdown, what are they doing in certain parts of the field as far as throwing the football? How does that affect their passing game and what they like to do? And again, um, the other part of this is gonna be who are they targeting, what part of the field? And the other thing is we like to do a map of the whole uh, field, you know, right flat, left flat, curl, you know, zones of the field, there's, you know, basically 12 zones. What zones are they throwing the ball to the most? That's important for us to understand, like, where, where their quarterback likes to throw the football. And if we have percentages on that, it's even better. If he's really good to his left, but sometimes right-handed quarterbacks are, they're better to their left. You know, we want to see where he's throwing the football the most and where he's the most consistent as repair for the game. All right. How do they formation us? Okay, these are all things, you know, defense coordinators draw up plays all week, all along, trying to make sure, you know, we got everything covered and we're sound. You know, and three by one, what are they going to do? How good is their X receiver? Okay, where do they put their best receivers at? Are we going to be able to cover him one-on-one, -on -one, or we need to give him help in the three by one game, in the trip stuff? These are questions we got to talk about. we got to have answers, uh, you know, two answers for that. What do, they, do they do empty your quads? We're always going to always going to be ready for empty and quads, but do they do a lot of it? Are they good at it? Is it something they like to do, depending on their quarterback and their skill players? Um, so we're going to be ready for that. Are they a formation of the boundary team, FIB team? How are we going to rotate to that? We're we just going to go to cover three. 
uh, rotate to it? Are we worried about it in our coverages, in our base defense? A lot of times we're not because the hash is so short uh, in high school football that if they go trips in the boundary, we're not really that concerned about it. Um, but if it's a team that does it a lot, we'll, we'll take a look at what we're doing. If there's certain things we don't want to be in if they, go, if they do go fib on us. Uh, they do a lot of unbalanced tackle over or any kind of, you know, kind of wacky formations. You know, we've played some teams that are tackle over almost all the time. You know, three-man service, but it's guard, tackle, tackle. The other side is guard, tight end. So we want to be aware of that just so we talk to our kids about it. So usually it's not a big deal, um, but just so we're aware. And then shifts or motions. What are they doing, you know, pre-snap or right before the snap to kind of get us, you know, out, out of whack a little bit and focus our guys. We want to focus our guys on their keys and their job, not get so worried about those motions unless they will bother them. All right. We also talk about five keys to preparation for us as a defensive staff. We want to have two answers for each set. So if they're going to do a lot of trips or empty, we're going to have two answers for those, okay, uh, to, to how we're going to attack those. Same, same with a goal line offense. They're a big, if they're a big 22 personnel team, we need to have two answers uh, to stop that. How are we going to be pressure them? We've got to be able to pressure. It's what we do. This defense's premise is to be attacking and be aggressive. You know, we're not always going to be aggressive. Sometimes it's just the image or the thought of us being aggressive, and they think we're coming, but we're not. But we want to be able to pressure them. What is the way we can pressure them the most soundly, but get there and land our blitzes? You know, we always want to have guys come free if we can or create mismatches. So how do we do that? Uh, in practice, we want to get as many reps as we can. And, you know, our goal for defense is one rep every 25 seconds because it's harder with the scout cards and stuff like that. But we want to try and keep that moving, get as many reps as we can during the week. But quality reps um, for our guys and obviously don't give up the big play. So we want to be aware of where their big play guys are, maybe what situations they take a shot, uh, so our guys are aware of that as well in the breakdown and for our call sheet as well, when we can be in, in quarters or something else to help our guys have success. And the last one, okay, we want to take away our opponent's bread and butter. What are they best at? What's the best thing they do? So if they're going to beat us, let's make them do something. If they're, they're big, they run power really well, let's figure out ways we can stop power, at least slow it down, force them to see some different stuff, maybe go to something else to beat us, right, to have success. Okay, in summation of game planning, it really comes down for us, these seven things, we gotta get all the breakdown information in, it takes time, but it's something, you know, you gotta be committed to it. The more work we do, the more we can kinda scale it down and give our, our players some real information. At the end of the day, it's not what we know, it's what the players know. So they're out there playing the game. If we can give them little tidbits of information to help them, uh, if they know on third down that they're, they're a big sprint out team, you know, these are things that help our guys have success and build confidence in how they play and leads to us having a lot of success as a football team. All right? Game planning.